In general, there has always been a negative connotation about women being either in tech, blockchain, or Web3 on a wider scale. But why? Assalamu alaikum, I'm Yasmin Ghalayni and welcome to Qahwa 3.0. In today's episode, we have a special guest with us, Anu Bahardwaj, a serial entrepreneur, media expert, and blockchain influencer. We will be discussing women in tech and Web3 advancements in the MENA region. Today's episode is a special feature and we just wanted to wish everyone a happy Women's Day. Hi, Anu. Thank you so much for being here on our channel. Um, for the first question, it might be simple, but there, there's a lot of connotation around it and a lot of people want to know why. Why do you think women dominate the beauty industry, but not when it comes to tech? Tech like crypto, blockchain, Web3 in general. In all honesty, I think uh, what's preventing women is that uh, tech is slightly complicated. You need to understand it. And most women like to do a lot of research before they um, start commenting on something they don't know too much about. And also, um, you know, there's, there's not that very many people like discussion groups and so on and so forth where it's simplified. Um, and it's easy to understand. And I think, you know, the next generation, it's becoming easier because there's so many more digital natives than before. Mm -hmm. um, and where we are right now, it's, um, you know, we haven't had that much exposure. And traditionally, women have been judged based on their looks. And um, especially in this part of the world, um, I would say not so much encouragement. I think it's changed a lot since our mother's generation to our generation. And it's going to definitely be even more different, like for the next generation. Um, so I do see that, you know, beautyism is, is going to be very popular still. Yeah. Um, but with the, the introduction of the smartphones, I think women are becoming more and more savvy about apps and things like that because it's become more relevant for them. So it will definitely change over time. It's already changed. It's already changed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, amazing. So for our second question, um, many Web3 projects are tapping into the MENA region recently, as of very recently, spe especially with the Dubai Metaverse strategy coming in, in place. And, you know, a lot of Web3 projects are coming here and they're trying to get investing from the from yeah. VCs from here and all. As the founder of a very successful race project, was it relatively easier to receive funding from financial in institutions in the Middle East rather than the US? Uh, OK, so this is very interesting. So what I'm working on currently is called Sheconomy. And Sheconomy um, was a COVID innovation that I started at my kitchen table with my, with my young daughter. And our first uh, sponsor was the Islamic Development Bank. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Mina, um, it's very interesting because I have not taken any um, major investors. I've been operating on non-dilutive capital. And it's been um, very interesting working with the Islamic Development Bank because our first partner was coming out of Saudi Arabia, Oman, UAE, yeah. Bangladesh, and Indonesia. So Mina, South Asia, Southeast Asia have been... Uh, where we actually got our start. Yeah, amazing. So um, how did you gain the attraction of the Saudi government to invest in your project? What made them see you all the way in the US where we're all the way here in the MENA region? Um, so this was, this was a shock to me, me as well. Um, I applied for the Islamic Development Bank COVID innovation competition. It was through the Transform Fund at the Islamic Development Bank. And they're headquartered in Jeddah. Mm -hmm. And this was an open competition. And they had, um, I want to say, close to 5,000 applications. Wow. From 175 countries all over the world. Anyone can apply. And they selected 30 winners. Seven of those were women. And we got the highest award. Um, how that happened... I mean, I still feel very blessed to have been selected. And I met the whole team that made the selection, you know, two years later after the LEAP Summit. Um, I went to Jeddah personally to go and say thank you because this really helped us launch our iOS app, our Android app, our iOS app. And, and they said, you know, when we selected you, 
we thought that this innovation would reach the highest number of recipients. And we actually took the apps that we built and built them on $10 mobile phones. Wow. So people, you know, the bottom billion would have access. And I think that's what really drew their attention because we wanted to help so many people that don't traditionally have Spotify or Angami or Acast or any of these other apps, Savin. Um, nobody really went in into this market as deep as we did. Um, and the fact that it worked, we're blessed again. Yeah. Um, so, and they wanted to be part of the success story. Um, I will share that the vision of what we were trying to accomplish when we said we want to reach a billion new listeners around the world, um, that was very attractive. Many of them are women and girls. Mm -hmm. um, children, 900 million kids were out of school during COVID. So the goal was how do we get these kids learning again? And so I think when they saw that education for all, it's a sustainable goal of the UN. Gender equality is a sustainable goal of the UN. Financial inclusion, new technologies. So it was hitting a bunch of different sustainable goals. Um, health for all, like we talk about women's health, breast cancer awareness, we talk about COVID, we talk about um, financial literacy and so on and so forth in many of our podcasts. And so I think that was attractive as well. And it didn't matter that we were in the United States. It didn't matter that I didn't come from the Islamic world. They said we wanted the best innovation because it's going to help all these people across the Islamic world. Everyone wins. So, um, you know, a continuation from my first question, we see a lot of support for women empowerment in the West. And, you know, for the MENA region, there is a lot of assumption that it doesn't exist at all. Women empowerment doesn't exist here. But maybe, but right now, that's really not the case. And some, some you know, areas in the, around the world think it's still the same and it's yeah. very old school. Maybe you can shed some light on that and just explain how that's not true and how really women are the forefront of success, right, in the MENA region. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about what's really happening in this part of the world. Um, and I will start by saying that, you know, when we started Sheikonomy, our first sponsored partner came from the, from, from the Royal Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And people still don't believe it. They're shocked. They're like, oh, well, you know, who's backing Sheikonomy? And um, it's, it's really taken shape over the course of the past two years. Um, strongest support is still coming from this part of the world. And I think also in terms of mass adoption and just getting the word out um, on how crypto works, why it's necessary, how we can participate. I mean, even being on, on this show with you today, um, to be open-minded enough to say, look, we need to start talking about this. That's a mindset that, you know, I think back in the United States, they're apprehensive, they're nervous. They're like, oh, how much should we educate everybody? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when is the right time? And I felt the same in Europe, you know, they're still kind of catching up. And in this part of the world, uh, it's all guns blazing. So it's, yeah. it's, it's great to see. It's and, very great to see. And also the fact that two women today are sitting and talking about this, that doesn't happen in the West. So um, I may be back in Dubai very soon for yeah. that reason. So we'd love to have you back. Thank you. Um, okay. So for our last question, yeah. we're clearly seeing a rise in women wanting to enter this space. What's your advice? How should they enter? What should they do? Oh, this is a great question. Educate yourself as much as possible right now. That, that would be my very first step. I mean, the, those of you who are watching the show, you're already ahead of the game. Now, if there's other women that are interested in this space, I would share your knowledge. That's the best way is to start learning together. So if you have people that know what they're doing, see if they'll spend a little bit more time with you and learn what's working for them, what hasn't worked for them. Uh, that's that's the, the first step. And then find a community that you feel comfortable with and find, find things that you're curious about, interested in. So for instance, if you like art, I don't know if you all have played with Lensa, the app. Yeah. I'm like, you know, obsessed with this new app and just been sending all kinds of pictures and things like that. And especially here, 
I've noticed a lot of women doing selfies and、mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So that's an interesting way to learn about what is an NFT, because ultimately those pictures are your property, and you can turn those into an NFT if you decided to.、Yeah. What is an NFT? Maybe you should join a group, and there's galleries and things like that. And so this is where it gets really fun. Because we're entering the creative economy、mm-hmm. and creator economy、yes. also, and it can start as young as the little ones, like they're doing, you know, projects and things like that. And I actually have、um, one little girl who made an NFT gallery out of her creations, and her father's an AI and so on and so forth, and she's eight years old.、Um, so yeah, it's like it's very interesting to see, you know, how simple that this new technology is. And、um, and just see what else is happening, and don't be intimidated. Yeah.、Um, there's a group that we worked with called NFT Kids, and it's all these projects by these young ones. And so if they can do it, we can do it. For sure. Right. And it's just reducing that barrier of thinking less about tech, but more about why should this be relevant to our daily lives. Amazing! Thank you so much, Anu, for being here, and we're so excited for you know. Hopefully, you'll come back, and we'll have a second interview together. With that, we come to an end to our discussion. Thank you so much, Anu, for sharing your insights about women in tech. I'm sure this conversation is so valuable to our viewers. If you want to learn more about the Web3 space and how it's growing, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, ma salama.